Welcome to the Framacy demonstration video. In this video, we will use Framacy, a code analysis platform, to analyze some C code, presenting some features and analyses of the platform. Details about the source code used and the Framacy version are available in the video description below. This source code comes from the DB1 benchmark, a modified version of a satellite module developed by Space Systems Finland. The code has been slightly modified for this demo, as we will see shortly. We will run the clock tool to estimate the size of the project. It shows there are about 50 files and 6,000 lines of code. It is a small application but not trivial. We will compile it using its make file and then run the binary to see what it outputs. The code runs several tests of the satellite module printing thousands of messages. At the end, we see a message saying that several tests were done and none have failed. C is a treacherous language. Testing is rarely enough. Running analysis tools, such as Valgrind, can help detect some kinds of problems. The execution with Valgrind instrumentation is slightly slower than the original one, but it's still fast enough for us. Valgrind can detect some kinds of undefined behaviors, but not all of them. In this case, Valgrind reports no errors. OK, let's start using Framacy. First, we need to obtain the list of source files. We can get it from the make file. We copy the first line without makes operators. If we try to run this, however, Framacy will not be able to parse them, as you can see in the error message. Just like a compiler, Framacy needs pre-processing flags for macro definitions and include directories. We also obtain an error if we replace Framacy with GCC. We could manually retrieve the flags from the make file, but let's instead use existing tools to perform this task. In this case, we will use Bear, also called Build Ear, which wraps calls to make and produces a JSON compilation database file. This is a format developed by LLVM and used by a few other tools. It's just a JSON file with a list of commands given to the compiler. It includes all the arguments used during such calls. With the JSON compilation database option, Framacy can read such files and apply the necessary pre-processing flags when calling the external pre-processor. Note that Framacy does not pre-process sources on its own, but relies on existing tools, usually GCC. With this option, Framacy is able to parse the source code. By default, no analyses are executed. However, the kernel has already identified a potential issue with a floating point literal value, emitting a warning. This warning is mostly relevant for advanced numeric analyses. We will not take it into account in this demonstration. We also see a warning from the Very Attic plugin, which handles calls to functions such as printf and scanf. This is a portability warning, which in this demonstration will not concern us. To simplify our command line, and avoid reparsing the code every time we will use Framacy's session features, namely the option save and load, to store intermediate results in a file. We rerun Framacy, adding the save option at the end. By default, Framacy session files use the .sav extension. Now we will finally run our first Framacy analysis. In this case, we will use the EVA plugin. EVA, for evolved value analysis, is based on abstract interpretation and used to prove the absence of runtime errors such as buffer overflows divisions by zero and use of invalid pointers. We use the load option to retrieve the parsed AST. Then, we run EVA and save the result in a different file. EVA outputs several messages during the analysis, and in the end, it displays a nice summary. For now, the most important aspects are First, the analysis finished very quickly. Second, there were several alarms. This means that EVA was unable to prove the absence of runtime errors at several points. 
This can be caused by real problems in the code, but also due to imprecisions during the analysis. By default, EVA will perform a fast analysis without much precision, but in this case, it's worth letting EVA spend more time computing the analysis. We will rerun it, this time with option EVA precision. It goes up to 11. Here we will use 3, which is enough for many real-world scenarios. The analysis takes slightly longer, but in the end we only have a single alarm. It could still be a false alarm, but at this stage, we can afford to spend some time looking at it using the graphical interface. We will run the new Framacy GUI called Avet to inspect the results and see what caused the alarm. Note that this could also be done using the old Framacy GUI. We will run Avet, loading the saved result from Eva. Avet is currently organized around views displayed in the right bar. We will start with the Eva summary view by clicking on it. This view shows, among others, the analysis coverage with functions with low coverage displayed on the top. The messages panel in the bottom shows alarms, errors, and warnings. We can see the two we mentioned at the beginning, but also the alarm emitted by Eva. If we click on the alarm and then on the source code view, we can see the exact spot in the code where the alarm happens. On the left panel we have the code as seen by Framacy, with the original code on the right side. The bottom panel in this view is the inspector, which shows syntactic and semantic information about the selected expression. If we hover the mouse over any expression in the left code view, the inspector shows data about that expression. Note that the source code seen by Framacy has an Axel annotation added to it. This annotation comes from the alarm, and it describes some necessary condition that Eva was unable to prove in order to ensure the absence of runtime errors. In other words, if that condition is not verified, the program will exhibit undefined behavior. Since Eva computes an over-approximation, it cannot know whether the condition will actually happen in practice. This is where the user must intervene. With the aid of the inspector, it is fairly easy to see that the problem arises when variable i equals 4. If we want further help from Framacy, for complex code, we can right-click on an expression and use the Studio Select Rights menu. This will ask the Studio plugin to compute all the locations that possibly modify the expression. In this case, these are the initialization of i to 0 and the i++ loop increment. The normalized source code seen by Framacy is sometimes harder to read than the original one. If we scroll the view in the right side, we can see this is a simple for loop, which goes from 0 to 4 inclusive. But the telemetry data array only has four elements. Now that we found out the origin of the error, we need to correct the source code. Note that Yvette does not allow editing the code. We need to use an external tool for that. We can, however, control click on the original source code at a given location and have Yvette open our chosen text editor on that location. You can choose your preferred editor using the File Preferences menu. Now we fix the source code, removing the or equal from the condition. This error was, in fact, deliberately introduced by us for this demonstration. The original code did not contain it. After fixing the code, we need to rerun the analysis, so we will close Yvette and rerun parsing then Eva. The Framacy team uses makefiles to make these steps automatic, but for this demonstration we do it by hand to make it explicit. Note that we will use slightly less precision when rerunning Eva. Instead of 3, we will use 1 for Eva precision. Since the analysis will reach more code, it will take longer, and for this demonstration we prefer it to finish earlier. Ideally, you will want to iterate on this process until no more alarms remain. For large analyses with EVA, you can use flame graphs to visualize in which functions the analysis spends most of its time. Run Framacy with option EVA-help. To obtain more details about command line options related to EVA,
Let us open Yvette again. We do not show it here, but Yvette remembers view settings from one run to another. You can resize panels, mix and match components as you wish. In the EVA summary view, we see that overall code coverage improved. We also see more alarms. For some of them, you can add Axel annotations to guide EVA. This improves precision, but without too much cost in time. This is explained in the EVA user manual and is out of the scope of this demonstration. This concludes the first part of this video tutorial for Framacy. In the next part, we will see how we can use other plugins such as AORI and WP to do more than just prove the absence of undefined behaviors. Thank you for watching.